Many years ago, before there were any automobiles, and before we had electricity or even gas lighting, and when people used horses if they wanted to go out for a ride, and oil lamps and candles if needed a light, there lived in a small country town, yes, a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. With just over a week to go before Christmas, the townspeople were busy indeed. And none more so than the candle maker and his young son, Tom. For in those days, quite small boys were expected to behave like grown men. Every Saturday at four o'clock, the candle maker had been making the journey from his shop to the church across the square. Because God had been so good to him and blessed his home and his work, he showed his gratitude by giving his finest candles to shine upon the altar as an offering to God. your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Whenever I read these words of Jesus, I think of one of our own people, our friend the candle maker, like a good steward, chose his love for God by giving his most beautiful candle to light the cross upon our altar. I pray that all of us will always give in this same spirit to show our love for the Father, who blessed us with a Christ child. The family was up early next morning, for a busy week lay ahead. The candle maker had to deliver quantities of Christmas candles of all shapes and sizes to the outlying farms and villages. Hurry up, son. Coming, Father. Now, now. I'm not going away forever. I'll be back on Christmas Eve in time for service. Look after your mother, son. And there are plenty of candles to be made. Don't worry, Father. Don't forget this week, I'm leaving you to make the second altar candle. I have made only one. And remember, both must be taken over to church by 4 o'clock Saturday. Yes, Father. Goodbye now. 
Goodbye. Bye, Father. With his father away and his mother extra busy getting ready for Christmas, young Tom was in charge of the workshop. With the task of turning out many candles a day. And then there was the altar candle for the Christmas Eve service on Saturday. On that Christmas Eve long ago, the church was made beautiful by the loving work of loving hands, just as churches are today. Then, as now, there was a manger where boys and girls would bring the white Christmas offering for the children's home. Father will be home soon. Tommy, you forgot. Run over quickly now. And be careful you don't drop them. I'm sorry I was late for the candles, Pastor. Never mind. You did do it. And just in time, too. Look who's coming. Son, did you make the church candle? Yes, Father. Each member of the family had his own sad thoughts that night. To think that a son of mine should make such a candle, a worthless candle that won't shine, and after all these years. Young Tom knew what his parents were thinking, that he had failed them, and that he had failed God.
And so it was many years ago. But the candlemaker's son learned the meaning of Christian stewardship, just as we must learn it today. <laughs>